Hey, happy Thursday, everyone. It's about 7 a.m. here on the East Coast. Prices of BTC currently at 99.30. I warned my community yesterday that we were looking a bit double toppy right here, okay? And I stated that this white line is probably the line in the sand for Bitcoin to hold up on this level, okay? And I'll explain to you why, all right? So typically, when you have double tops being created, right? So for example, let me give you an idea, all right? What happens is, it's like this, okay? Price comes in kind of like this, right? Comes in, comes in, hits a resistance level, all right? And then it pulls back and then hits a resistance level again, all right? So this line that was created by the first top of this hit right here is usually the resistant or I'm sorry the support turned on the other side okay so in this case right for this double top to be confirmed this top and this top right and I know people are wondering like well you know this wick went a lot higher but look at the candle closings okay this one is about 10,055 this one is about 10,086 so about $30 off or so right so it's basically a double top in my opinion okay so it's like this so this double top is basically going to be confirmed if this marker right here um, the low of this wick right here is broken. So I put a marker right around this area right here, which is 99.35. And you can see that we did this, okay? Boom, wick to it. Haven't quite broken it yet because we haven't closed a successful candle under it. So now we're looking to go like this. And I'm telling you that if we break this area, we're going to accelerate down really fast towards the $9,700 area. Okay, anywhere between $9,700 and $9,800. Probably fall more than likely to this white line. So if you are looking for potential shorts or potential longs, I bet something like this could happen, okay? So we'll probably fall, all right? Um, bounce off somewhere over here. Try to come back up again to this level. Probably get rejected around $9,900, $9,925 or so. Um, come back again. If this is truly going to be support, we're going to double bottom and take off or what will happen is we will double top you know fall down all right this will then become resistance this will break also and then this will accelerate down really fast towards 9600 and 9500 area but remember that the 9700 dollars area is going to be a decent amount of support because you know we had this this wick right here this wick right here these couple of weeks. So all of these were trying to hold down the price, but then price kept, you know, hammering at it like this, going like this, going all the way like this, came back down, um, over here, came back down, over here, finally flagged, and then boom, took off. So this area particularly, between, you know, 9,700 and 9,800, is gonna be a decent amount of support. So I bet you you can catch a quick long right here, okay? All right. Now let's go on to the bigger picture, okay? So let's check this out. Let me see where my charts are. I have so many different charts now. Um, okay, so still potentially in the middle of this. Um, for the most part, I mean, you know, things do look decent right here in terms of a potential wave three, uh, especially on a chart like this. But remember that nothing has been confirmed until we actually break uh, wave one right here, which is you know far away. That's, I mean, a good $1,300 climb from here, right? So, you know, if you wanna wait $1,300 more, um, maybe it might be another day or two, that might be something that you could potentially catch the, you know, the next couple waves of the wave three, wave four, wave five. But till then, uh, I mean, personally, you know, it's really hard for me to believe that we'd be struggling so much to get the wave three started and wave two would be so deep. And this is where, you know, this wave five wave um, impulse right here doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, but hey, you know, we've seen crazier things in BTC. So I'm still leaving this on here because technically this is a wave two because this wave two did not, you know, surpass the, the low of the starting of wave one. 
So who knows? I mean, you know, there just might be a lot of resistance that um, BTC is trying to chew through. It's just taking you know longer than we we thought, uh, and the wave three could just take a long time to get started. And then you know, once we're out of the woods over here, I would say the most amount of resistance is probably between um, uh, ten thousand four hundred probably and about eleven two. 11.6 probably so 10.4 to 11.6 is the big chunk of resistance um, and like I stated in my previous videos that if we start going on the weekly chart over here right if we look for a candle closing on the weekly above 11.6 this is a positive sign um, you know this could be a potential area that you know people might want to get into um, that's your choice or if we still struggle to get over 9,900, 10,000, you could short. I mean, I shorted yesterday. I let my community know right here that I was um, shorting, opening short position here at 99.85. This was basically yesterday morning after I did my video. Okay, so you know everything in um, everything that we do in our community is visible whether we're shorting or longing, where we're taking profits, where we're you know placing stops, etc. Okay, so if you don't have that kind of access in your community, come join CryptoSomniac. If you don't even know how to short or long, come join us, you know, um, go to the products page right here, and then buy the technical analysis course first to understand, you know, how to read technicals, how to be able to trade, understand market psychology, and then come join us in the Advantage program, all right? Um, you know, so far the market has been a little bit dull. So all we're really doing is scalping here and there. Is this is this chop right here is really not something that you want to be trading anyway. Um, but sometimes, you know, opportunities come very easy. Like for example, um, let's see. You know, I think uh, let me see which candle it was. I know a couple days ago, I had I think it was this candle right here right here um, that I had stated that you know I was gonna be taking a long on and we got a quick you know maybe 2% out of it right um, you know there's there's always opportunities like this actually no I'm sorry it was this candle right here before this big dump uh, basically what, what what I was seeing is a big sort of um, a uh, a uh, falling wedge in this area right here okay and this candle was coming, you know, going to pop out of it. That's what I was hoping for, and it did. So I got a nice three or four percent out of it. Let me see if I can find that trade setup. I know I have it here somewhere. And so this is our trade setup channel, guys. Um, you know, this is where I talk about all the different trade setups. Even if I'm not taking a trade or I am taking a trade, I announce it here. Any good structure that I see, any good setup that I see, I post it right here. Okay. Um, I think this was the candle right here. Okay, as you can see, I posted this um, well before before this even happened. You can see uh, it was right here. Okay, so I posted this right here, this falling wedge, right, and I was hoping for a candle to break out of it, and it did, and it looked something like that. Right, so it was a nice, you know, easy for me. I I was longing it on um, Darabit. And it was a nice 85% gain for me, right? So sometimes, you know, opportunities like that come really easy. Um, and they cover, you know, any trade losses that you have for, I don't know, depending on your capital, maybe a, a week or a month or a year, you know? So you don't, don't, don't think that you have to go 100x every time. Don't think that you have to stake all your capital every time on every trade, nor do you have to trade it every day. Right? You know, sometimes you can just put up one or two trades a week, maybe even one a week, um, and they give you nice three, four percent gains. Sometimes you know you get a nice pop of ten percent gain. All right, so you know, try try to think about this market as you know it giving you really good signals instead of um, you going you know thinking that you have to hunt down signals and that you have to trade every single day. You know, just because the market is twenty four seven doesn't mean you have to trade twenty four seven. Okay. All right. So going back to that chart, you know, potentially still working through that wave uh, five wave count. Uh, don't quite know if that's going to pan out that well, but you know, I'm I'm still gonna um, leave my account up. 
to see exactly what it's going to show us, right? Uh, this is something else that I mocked up yesterday. I'm going to throw on these pivots right here, all right? So here's where things get interesting, okay? Another reason why I shorted in this area, all right, is because that this trend line right here that's been created from this top, 11,900 or 12,000, whatever it was, you can see that it touches this trend line, or I'm sorry, this candle right here, this candle right here, and now also meeting our uh, current stage of the, the candles that we're seeing right now. Okay, so with that being said, you could see that not only is this trend line holding price down, there's this particular order block right here from the previous um, pivot that Bitcoin was trying to escape out of but got rejected. That created a bit of an order block. Okay, and remember, order blocks are nothing but um, buyers or sellers trying to drive price one way, but then eventually the overall um, other direction basically takes over and pushes price down. So what really happens is it creates a block, a, a block of orders, basically where um, either people were trying to buy and thinking that this was the bottom and they got you know, torpedoed down, price just collapsed under their feet. And then all they're really hoping for is um, either they got in here as shorts or they got in here as longs. So what they do is they wait for the price to come back to that same level and they'll sell right here. Okay, whether they sell at short positions or, or whether they sell their spot buy orders or long orders uh, to, to break even, this is the area where there's going to be a maximum amount of confluence. Okay, and this typically happens where you know price is trying to come back into the same region and gets rejected, and so this creates an order block kind of like this. See, you can See that yellow block rejected it right there. Rejection, rejection, comes back all the way into that yellow block again, rejection, okay? So that tells me is this order block is really where uh, there's either a lot of sellers trapped or there's people who are shorting here, don't want the price to escape out of this area because then their shorts are underwater. So they're holding the price down, okay? Um, one of our members actually posted a couple interesting things. So this is something that I wanted to talk about, okay? So you can see right here that there's a, a big buy wall of 10, uh, at $10,000. This was last night though, okay? So about 12, or actually eight hours or so ago. And then there was a sell wall on the other side, right? Same thing, uh, 1,000 BTC buy, um, so about total of $10 million. Or I'm sorry, wait, is it 10 million or? Yeah, 10 million, okay? So what this tells me is um, these are just bots flashing orders, okay? But the, the reason bots will flash orders like this uh, is because they want to trap either the longs or the shorts in one side or the other. I don't really know which side, but I mean, personally, you could assume that the trend has been going down overall, right? And so the reason if I was a bot and if I was, you know, a professional, uh, trader with a lot of money, what I would do is I would flash these orders and I would get people to FOMO in right before me, okay? So what they would do is they would market buy, they would outbid me, right, over here. So they would bid above me and they would get trapped up here because ultimately what I need people to do is uh, keep feeding into my, into my short position, okay? Because then ultimately I could tank price down and those same people who bought up here Will probably sell lower and so that will cause sort of a panic you know basically basically a cascading effect of price going down um, typically retailers are the first to create the domino effect the, the cascading because they have very feeble um, hands right so when they're holding an asset oftentimes what happens is when the price trickles down just a little bit uh, they'll just start you know market selling or setting their stops incorrectly and then price start of uh, sort of you know starts breaking um, down really fast right and then more often than not um, retailers will again some of them will sell even lower when they should have had their stop maybe over here right so they'll probably sell down here at the last bit of the wick or 
you know, basically when the price is done correcting. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's just how uh, retailer mindset is. So with that being said, you know, that again, so this order block gets created, right? And you could see price is not only being held down by the order block right here, uh, it's being held down by this descending trend line. Now, if this is truly to break out of this, okay, now I have no idea if this is going to hold up, okay? Um, I can only say that this is held before, this is held before, so I can only assume that it's going to hold right now, all right? I can't assume that it's going to break because I have no idea, because history tells me so far that it's held the price down. So my the odds are in my favor that it will hold the price down, so I opened a short in this area. Okay, and you can see price is starting to break down a little bit more. Uh, at the very least, like I said, anywhere between 70, uh, 9700 and 9800 is where I expect the price to break out to. And you can see even over here, the pivot, four hour pivot lines up to that same area. Okay, um, I want to check out where the 100, the, the 50 and the 200 EMA line up to. Okay, so here's something interesting, which is that now the 50 EMA, which is right here, the gold lines up right around uh, 9700 or so. So if we potentially are supposed to break out of this trend line, I would say we do something like this and then go out. Okay. But again, this is sort of a risky bet. Okay. Um, you could place some buys right around, say, 9700 or so or 9800, that region, and hope for a long. But you don't know if price is just you know, gonna collapse and follow this prevailing, you know, downtrend like this, right? So what you could also do is stay above, eight, not, well, about 10,300, I would say, just to be safe. And wait for multiple four hour closings or maybe even a daily closing, and then potentially long, okay? Um, I would say on the daily chart, it looks a bit different. Let me turn the this off and let's see how the daily looks so here's the here's a daily okay uh, let me turn this off and this off uh, these are on the wrong time frame okay give me one second so what I'm gonna show you is on the daily what we're trying to anticipate and figure out is have we broken successfully out of this falling wedge? Okay. And let me throw up some EMAs right here, 21 and 30, which are very useful for us. All right, the 50 is useful. Okay. And the Bollinger Bands a little bit too. Okay. So notice that, first of all, the yellow is the middle of the Bollinger Band, so it's the middle band. And typically, that's really the area that... Uh, you know, price typically finds support or resistance, uh, depending on which side the price is on, before breaking up to either side. Okay, so you can see right now, price is finding resistance right now, currently at about 99.50, which is the yellow band right there, the middle band. Okay, and now when I take that away, you can see that both the 21 and the 30 EMA are right there too. Okay, holding price down. So it could be possible that, you know, price struggles through that area um, and doesn't quite break through and falls down even further. Okay, that could be a pretty high possibility. But again, we don't know if the daily is going to truly um, break out. On the daily chart especially, the higher this wick, is somewhere around 10,250. So 10,300 again to be safe might be a potential area for you to long. Or if you really wanna be safe, you can wait above this pivot, which is about, you know, 10,800 or so, okay? So you have options, right? You have different options at different stages. You can even, you can even buy now and, you know, set your stop. Your stop is probably gonna have to be under these two wicks right here at the very least, so 9340 or so, all right? If you feel, you know, safe that you think price is just going to keep on trending up higher, so your stop is gonna have to be this deep, okay? Um, this was a falling wedge and this was a sort of an Adam and Eve bottom So I guess you could make the argument that we are you know going to trend up and we're going to you know create a uh, double bottom and Break out successfully, but the double bottom has not been confirmed 
until 11,200 over here is broken, all right? So this doesn't make any sense for me to say that we have successfully created a double bottom because it hasn't successfully been confirmed, okay? Um, so you have different options. Like I said, you can wait on 11.6 as per the uh, weekly right here. On the four hour, you can wait above you know, the 10,300 um, marker. On the daily, you could wait above 10,300 uh, or you could wait above 11,200. Um, you can wait above, uh, I don't know, I mean, you could buy now, place a stop right here. So all these options, folks, actually lay out to my community every single day. Right, so you could see every single day you have options. Okay, I took the option of you know shorting, right? That's one of my options. Again, if I'm wrong, that's okay, I'll flip long because <clears throat> if we're truly supposed to go much further, you know, I'll take a, maybe a four percent loss or something, or five percent loss, and then I'll probably ride this wave all the way up here, and you know, that'll easily cover my losses from say this area to this area, right. So not a big deal, um, but knowing to understand trends, follow momentum, follow especially volume analysis, um, that will you know sort of help you in the in the long run. Okay, so let's see what volume analysis and you know the RSI is showing us, right? So I'm gonna flip this on the four hour chart and turn on the volume here. Okay, so. Here's the volume on the four hour chart, all right? Okay, so, you know, what I was really hoping for is, um, you know, in this whole regular flat correction that I've shown many times before, you can Google this, this yourself. In the regular flat correction, what I was really hoping for is sort of a, um, you know, decline in volume like this, and then really, you know, the starting of this wave C right here, I was hoping from here onward, I would see a nice pickup in um, buy side volume, okay? Uh, and I'm really not seeing that yet, so I don't know if you can call this sort of a, a real, you know, five wave count that may happen, because um, the, the breakout of this has already been so weak, you know, after wave one, wave two was just a big drag and a bigger correction, like, Wave one took, I don't know, maybe like uh, two and a half days. Wave two t took, uh, let's see, from there to this bottom, took about like six or seven days. You know, so three days or uh, three and a half days up and about seven days down. So this is not a good sign, right? Typically you want wave two to be shorter and you know wave three to be pretty explosive. And so the fact that I'm not seeing that, the fact that I'm not seeing you know, a volume expansion on the buy side makes me be a little bit more cautious. And this is why, again, my inclination is to, to short. Um, on the technicals, <clears throat> excuse me, things are looking a little bit better, right? And I'll tell you why. So this big dashed line right here that you see, okay, it touched here once, touched here twice, right? It touched here three times four times and then once it became resistance resistance right there let me see if i can zoom in and show you guys what i mean <clears throat> you can see right there right touch there touch there became resistance resistance and then it finally broke on through so it's actually testing that same area as support right now so if it collapses through that support again right and it goes back towards i don't know 9600 9500 more than likely What's really happened is, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why I'm getting some coughs here. All right, so more than likely what will have happened, what we can say is here was the first bottom that was created at 9,100, right? We went all the way to about 11,200. Then we tried to create another you know, double bottom, right? But prices only got up to about 10,000. And if it comes back around again, this line right here, this small dotted line, that's going to crack, okay? And once it cracks, it's going to be a fast acceleration down, okay? So what will really happen is prices will slowly bleed down. And if 9,300 um, breaks, 9,100 will come really fast, right? And then I would probably say anywhere between this, you know, 
purple block right here that you see this big consolidation somewhere in that block is where prices will land all right so anywhere between a high of like 8800 to a low of about 7400 dollars i'm not saying i'm hoping on that i'm not saying that's going to happen but if this is what we could muster out of the second touch on 9100 this this is a terrible sign you know this is this is just um basically uh, a strong signal of saying that all right prices are looking even weaker this demand was weaker than we thought this 9100 demand um you know and this is why double bottoms are important right this is why you know once price comes into that first bottom like this the first top that was created from that bottom you need to surpass that top by creating the second bottom down here and if you don't that means that one it's not a double bottom two this demand right here was weaker than we thought because typically you want demand to be strong coming in once right prices barely touch it and take off then you want the second touch to be you know either very close to demand or maybe even a little bit deeper inside of it and it really just skyrockets prices and that creates a clean double bottom because that says that you know the bulls waiting in this demand block were patient enough and they really loaded up and they're not going to let prices fall down again so they just you know send prices just rocketing and if that's not going to happen right if prices keep struggling in this 10,000 um, area or 9900 area and that would imply that 9100 is weaker than we thought and ultimately it's going to break down you know so so first break i mean i guess you could make the argument that we could fall at the bottom of this trend line which has been created by this big flat correction so touch one touch two touch three could be somewhere over here around 84 8500 uh, which also happens to correspond to this big purple block which i think also happens to correspond with the um 100 moving average okay right there let me see if i could turn that off let me see if i can yeah so oh uh, no the 100 moving average is currently around 8800 or so right around there uh, let me see where the 100 is as per this weekly right here or not the 100 i'm sorry 21 ema 21 EMA is currently around 82, 8300. Yeah, so over the next maybe week or so, right? I bet this EMA could climb, meet us around 84, 8500, which again corresponds with this, you know, purple block. Maybe bleed through this 100 moving average just a little bit with a sharp wick um, and hit the, you know, this descending uh, trend line right here. So around, like I said, 84, 8500, right? So something to keep an eye on, okay, folks? All right, uh, I think um, that wraps it up. I did wanna talk about something else over here. Uh, someone posted this on Twitter and I thought this was really interesting. Um, here are the Bitcoin historical monthly performances, okay? So if you look each month for the last uh, seven years shows how Bitcoin has performed and on the right, it shows the average returns for that specific month over the years. Okay, now historically, July has had one and two red months. Okay, but remember, both of those red months in July in 2016 and 14 were followed by a red August. Okay, I'm not saying that's going to happen again here, but July historically is not the highest returning month anyway. Okay, so if it's not the highest returning month, I think momentum typically slows down around this deep summer time, right? I don't know why it is, but you know, it's just how it works. So all we can do is look at the past data and at least give some odds, some statistical probability that if July was red, which it you know clearly was, right? If we look at this uh, monthly chart, July was a red candle, okay? So if we assume that July was a red candle here, there's a pretty high chance that July, that, that the follow-up August could also be red, all right? Um, you know, I don't know the, the likelihood of that, but I'm gonna place my bets on saying that the August month is not gonna be the hottest month, I would say, you know, in my opinion. 
uh, just based on this previous data. And also given the fact that we've had one, two, three, four, five straight months of you know bullish candles like this, right? One, two, three, four, five. Um, I would figure one or two months of correction really just get you know people mellowed out from something like this before maybe a next big leg up if we're truly going to you know keep on going up, uh, which I believe in the longer run we are. Um, you would figure that you know you'd pull back for a good month or two and then take off, right? All right. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, I found this on Twitter from um, Timothy F. Peterson. Uh, he's a really great guy. I think his Twitter handle is N Squared Crypto. Uh, really knowledgeable person. And he wrote this uh, Red Pill Investment Philosophy. And I really like this. So I wanted to share this with you guys. So, you know, come join the CryptoSonia community and you can read this. We always provide little snippets of knowledge, little, you know, snippets of information. I provide the COT data, which is Commitment of Traders Reports. Um, largely, you know, institutional um, funds were, you know, largely shorting since uh, July 23rd. So I'd figure that going into August, um, I don't think this, you know, this positioning is going to change. I don't think they're just going to flip from short to long right away. Typically, momentum like this, especially on futures charts, uh, is followed over um, into the next month, at least maybe even two months. So. You know, leverage funds, <clears throat> especially as per, <clears throat> excuse me, as per the uh, COT data, is still short. All right, so this is just something to keep in mind. All right, folks. Let's see what else. What else? What else are we seeing? Um, I think uh, I think that's it. You know, hopefully you guys are making some some smart decisions. Um, and you're trading, if, if you're not, uh, come join Cryptosomniac, all right, folks? All right, take care, cheers, and uh, you know, make some wise decisions today, all right? Protect your capital, cheers.